that Zakha Ezer lo Zakha Kenegdo, that it all depends on the man. That if you're a Zokha, meaning if you refine yourself, then your wife is a helpmate. But if you don't refine yourself, then she's against you. And against you means she doesn't help in anything. And it all has to do, in the end, it goes back to the man. It goes back to you. It all depends on how you, on how you conduct yourself. So let's see how this works. Kilomar, third line on page Chet. שאם יזדקך האדם כראוי עוזרת לו אשתו ללכת מהחי אל חי. Then she's called an Eshet Chai. If he refines himself, she helps him, she pushes him to move forward. That's what she wants from him. She, what does it mean to, to, to move forward for a man? Does it mean to become more spiritual? What does it mean? What does it mean, Lech Michael El Chai? How did the Rebbe explain Lech Michael El Chai? Chai means to do, to do more. So it doesn't necessarily mean to be more spiritual. If you, uh, there's always a question, like people ask, I have set times for learning. So what should I, if I add more, what am I adding more? More time or more quantity or more quality? Should I be adding more time or more of what I'm doing with that time? So there's only so much time in the day. You can't usually add more time. So when he says to the lechet Michail al to add more means either quantity or quality in the same amount of time. And as you get better, as you devote yourself more to what you're doing, you're able to do more in less time or in the same amount of time. So you can add more. But to add more is usually, almost without exception, to add more quantity and quality, not to add more time, because there's no more time. You, you, if you have more time left, what, do you, what have you been doing with it until now? <laughs> you, you wasted it. You, yeah, you wasted it. So stop wasting it. <laughs> so all the time has to be utilized. So now, what, what really gets us to utilize time? One of the, one of the hardest mm -hmm. things for people who have little kids is that they see that so much time is wasted on uh, the morning routine and the evening routine. In the middle there's no routine, so you know, there's no end and no, <laughs> no beginning to it. But in the morning and the evening... The, no routine with the kids. There's yeah, no there's no routine. <laughs> no, they, they just do whatever they want. <laughs> it's not clear what they do. So, one of the main things that you have to know is, first of all, it ends at some point. There's, there's light at the end of the tunnel. Okay. I remember that from when I was, when I had my uh, second child. My first child wasn't like that. Second child, until about three years ago, I didn't know what the center of town looked like. I had no idea there was a center of town. I knew that they had built a light rail somewhere in Israel. I didn't know where it was. But people told me it was somewhere in Yerushalayim. I didn't see it, because you can't get out. How can, you get a, how can you get out? How can you, you don't have time for anything. Why, do, why does Hashem set up life that way? It shouldn't be the other way around. You should have children when you're young, when you're older. You should spend your good years when you're healthy and you're vigorous and you're full of energy, building a career, learning. Why does Hashem stick the children at the beginning? So one of the big secrets about children is that they are black holes. <laughs> what happens to something that comes near a black hole? It gets really condensed. It's sucked in, but before it's sucked in completely, you get really condensed. And actually, you become like a spring, you know, but a spring that you're kvetching. You're pushing it more and more and more, and you're building up a lot of energy in it. And then at some point, the kids get older, and they don't need you to wake them up. You know, they don't need to put them to sleep. Because they don't wake up and they don't go to sleep. <laughs> so you don't need, they don't need you anymore. For it. So what happens suddenly, it doesn't happen all at once, but over a span of five, ten years, suddenly you start getting all your time back. So what do you do with your time suddenly? <laughs> I don't know what to do with it. So the whole purpose of kvetching you is that when you release the time, if you feel it happening, you can utilize it much better than if I would have just given you all the time now. 
when you're full of, when you've been pressed this way, when you're used to doing things quickly, when you're used to being, feeling pressure, when you're used to not being able to do what you want to do, so you can release the spring, and uh, you're like a spring that just jumps around, does nothing. Or if it releases slowly, which it usually does, you can take that energy back and invest it into the type of life that you always wanted, except that it really started, it starts at 8, 45, 50. That's really when it starts. But you've got so much practice in using your energy the right way that you can really put it into the vessels that you planned. If, if you do it, when you try to do it when you're young, most people fail. Because it's very, very hard. It's very hard to be dis disciplined enough. But once you've been used to it over so many years, 20, 25, 30 years, and now you get this energy back, you get this time back, you suddenly feel that there's so much more that you can do with it. In any case... But that's the issue of Jim Lekoya. Your good years are before that, so it's... They're lost, as it were. But no, but the core here is to press more in, more and more and more. And then you can even learn from the Rebbe. That's how the Rebbe's life was. At age 50, he became the Rebbe. Like, he was really meant to be a Rebbe all along, probably. But he only started at age 50, meaning at age 50, the, everything that was disciplined, that was condensed, then was taken back into leading Yiddishkeit. That's how, how it worked for him. And it's pretty much a, 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 a sign for how it works for most people today. Okay. So, Lelechet Michael El Chayn means that you feel that you can do more and more. She, in, she impresses upon you, she motivates you to do more and more. Zikuch achal zikuch, and to these dakechas to do even more. Kamvar b'makom achel sheshnayim shtei b'chinot bitul v'zikuch, bitul haynu bitul ayesh leayin. That's what it means to be spiritual, as it were. But zikuch haynu is dakechut ayesh. It's who I am, the physical part of who I am, the the psychological part of who I am. My yeshus, my feeling of self, is refined through my marriage. That's the main thing that needs to be refined. I don't get married to become a scholar. I don't get married to become holy, in the sense of detached from the world. I get married to fix my physical and psychological selves. The only way that they'll change is if I run up against my wife. <laughs> She's the only power in the world that can cause me to change. And I owe her a lot because she's the only one who's willing to put up with it. <laughs> Because to put up with me changing is not easy at all. I and mean, the Mashiach also can change a person. Mashiach leave you dead in the Why? cold in the water. Because he gets tired of you. He doesn't want you. He's not married to you. Because he's not married to you. So, you put trust him, so... No, I'm sad. When you still have the relationship, it, it works. But you can't, you can't be with him 24 hours a day like you can with your wife. Yeah, you do I you can. Take a, take a vacation. <laughs> Wait till, uh, if there's not just 24 hours with your wife, then uh, there's a uh, Benazmanim, and, uh, and then your kids come home also. <laughs> 24 hours. <laughs> there's no sleeping anymore. It goes away. Apparently you don't need to sleep when the kids are home. This is the most important thing. They're really, what is Hashem in the end? Is he Ayn or Yesh? What is the Shem? Is he a Ayn? Is he nothingness? Yes, or is he Amiti? Yes, or Mukhlat? He's absolute Yesh. So it's Dafka, the part of us that's embodied, that's put into the physical nature, that can become similar to Hashem. How did the Rebbe explain this? The Rebbe used to say that we have a special quality, human beings have a special quality called Mitziuti Me'atzmuti. That I feel that I came from myself. Nobody knows, nobody feels that they came from their parents. I have parents, I know who they are, but I don't know. In fact, if, any, if, if at any point, sometimes people think that it's news. If at any point my parents would try to talk to me about how I came into being, I become very uneasy. So some people think it's because I don't want to hear that my parents also conceived me. It's part of the picture. The other part of the picture is that to be a being, to be a yesh, I can't really know where I came from. So if they pull the, pull the curtain and suddenly tell me, look, you came from somewhere, 
that ruins that feeling of mitziyotim atzmutim. Says the Rebbe, that can be something very negative because a person feels there's only me in the world. I don't owe anybody anything. On the other hand, that's exactly what it means to be similar to Hashem, who is mitziyuto me'atzmuto, who has that same quality that he's not dependent on anything else. Of course, in a Jew, what it means is like it should be like in Hashem, that because he is mitziyuto me'atzmuto, that his being is from himself, Therefore, everything that he does is in order to bring other things into being. He's a mashpia be'etzim. And the same thing by a Jew. I can use this quality of mitziyuti matzmuti that I don't need anybody else in order to be a mashpia everywhere that I am. Okay. You know, let's say some people are more leader, mashpia in the teva, other okay. people are more followers in the teva. But so even you some... Don't need anyone else. Every person has machas on a different level. You have your kids, you have your family. And you're a king in some realm. It could be a bigger realm, a smaller realm. But in the end, you're a king somewhere. And a lot of the problems at home start when you, when you don't fulfill that role. A king is not somebody who's a totalitarian. He's not a dictator. But he's somebody who's always mashpia, who's always there. One of the things that the Rebbe showed us which was, if you follow how the Rebbe was different than all the other Rebbes before him, the Rebbe was always present. He was always there. He, he never moved. There was not, never such a thing that the Rebbe went on vacation. The most vacation he ever took was in the first years that he went up to Camp Gan Yisrael for like a few hours. That was the most he ever did. And 40 years straight, he was always there. He always knew where he was. That's, that's a mashpia be'etzim. That's how a mashpia really is. It's like the sun. You can always count on it to be up there. It's always there. Even when you don't see it, you know it's, it's coming around. In a few hours, you'll see it again. And that's such an important quality to have at home that even if you're not there, to be present. It's the opposite of what men are usually like. Usually women complain <laughs> that even when you are here, you're not here. Okay? But why is that? Because when I come, suddenly I want to be a king in the sense of, serve me. <laughs> serve me my dinner, serve me this, serve me that. Instead of, if I have a few hours at home, this is my most important place to be mashpia. So to be mashpia is to give people attention. The most important thing you can give to any person in the world is your interest, is your attention. There's nothing more important that you can give anybody. Not money, not health, none of this. If you're genuinely interested in somebody, and, and how most, almost how can you not be interested in a human being? Because a human being is, a, is the most complex sugya in the world. It's much more complex than any abaya and rava. It's a million times more complex. If you think about it, every person you know is more complex than any sugya you've ever learned. And this whole idea that you can sort of uh, peg people quickly and figure out how they work and what makes them tick, it's a, it's a first approximation. And after that, you see that it gets very, very, very complex. If you start to get to know somebody. That's one of the reasons why men complain that they don't understand their wife. It's not because they don't really understand them. It's because she's close enough that I see how intricate and how complex the human soul is. And all the more so that it's the other sex. It's a, it's, a, it's a female versus a male, which, is, which has some differences. But any person that you would spend enough time with, you could learn that they are very, very, very complex. In any case, so to give that attention, that's giving. You don't have to actually, in, you don't have to actually spill the words out. You can just sit and listen even. Okay. Ikarazikuch, so what do we see from this? That Ikarazikuch tanui be metziut aisha. So the woman is metziut, she's the reality, she's connected to reality more, and she's more affected by reality. Because of that, we say that's the modern interpretation of what it means that Nashim da tan kala, that women have light consciousness or light das. What does it mean? It means that she's easily affected by her surroundings. She's more easily affected than a man who's more objective, than who can stand apart from something. And not be affected by it. That's why she was affected by the, by the snake in, the, in Gan Eden. And Adam, where was he? 
could have been a meter away. So but he's in his world. So he's saying that it's like a woman is less than a man. Is that is what? Less than a man because she can be like, you can convince her even less. That's why she's plus afraidless. That's what it says. That's the explanation. But only for an aidus of something that. No, what, what used to be the explanation, I can't say. <laughs> this is already an upgraded explanation. This is the sort of like the halachic Hasidic explanation. It's not the Kabbalistic explanation. Kabbalistic explanation, really, you can't say today. But it's true. It's the reason why it's all like this. But what, what it's saying is that a woman is more susceptible to nature, she's it's more like connected to nature. To be more connected to your surroundings is not necessarily a bad thing. It can go both ways. I mean, you can work, you can play with your, your, your hats, right? And she can play with yours also. Nobody's saying that it's it, easy. It works both ways. She didn't say, she said she's easily affected by her surroundings. Okay, Put her in a certain place and she'll be, more, she'll you, be influenced. You can more seduce maybe. her more easily, you can influence her more easily. You see, the, when she goes shopping, she's the. She has to go into every store. It doesn't mean she's going to buy, but it does mean she wants to see it. It does mean that there is a connection, whereas a man can travel through this, you know, the whole mall, and just not be interested in anything, he's in his thoughts. And he doesn't care. It's much harder for a woman to attain that state. It's not that she can't, but it, the natural state is to be more connected to her surroundings. That's what dat kala means. Dat is iskashus. So when you say that the dat is kal, you're saying that it comes easily. She quickly connects to something. That's, by the way, one of the reasons why they find it usually easier to multitask. <laughs> well, what? Because they're doing two things at the same time. They're not really oh. doing them at the same time. They're moving from one to the other very quickly. Whereas we, if we finally are able to connect to something, that, that's called a heavy dot. So it's very hard to detach. And it's harder to move to something else. Because really, really we, we connect more Different. in a more difficult way. To connect to something takes us a lot more time. And therefore it's also deeper. In a certain sense, it's more, it's more, it's, it's, it's more steady. That's the whole thing you said, that, that is the woman is much more connected to you, much more than you connect to her. Okay. Yeah, it, it takes you a longer that, time yeah, to connect. That's okay. what we said at the beginning. Okay. Yeah. Okay. The multitasking is uh, uh, that's the example, example, example I think in my mind. It's the best example in It's very clear to them. It's actually how a processor works, how, how multitasking works in processors. It's not that it does two things at the same time, it just switches tasks very quickly. Anyway, so the woman is more connected to mitziut, the man is more connected to mahut. Mahut is essence. That's, that's one of the basic masculine-feminine pairs in Hasidus. What's the difference between seeing the mahut and seeing the mitziut? Seeing the mitziut is seeing reality. Seeing the mahut is seeing the essence behind reality. It's to think about reality in a theoretical terms. So the, the, the hint in Kabbalah is that the word zach, to be refined, to be rectified, Mizukach. Zach is 27, is the letters of the Aleph, Bet 22, plus the final letters, Mansapach. So the, there's two Aleph Bets, it usually says, 22 and 27. The 22 is the male Aleph Bet, and the, tw- and the 27 is the female Aleph Bet. And when they come together, it's one of the Kavanos, you know, the, there's a lot of Kavanos in Spiros Omer. One of them is, that you go through the two Aleph bets during the 49 days, because 22 wow. and 27 is 49. It's one of the explanations. Why is, why is the, uh, uh, the, the Zach uh, 27 is been, why, why is that been male? Because the Mansapach, the final letters are feminine. They're all feminine, they're dinim. What, 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 they're right? all din. din. So when, when we have this idea that the final letters are like the Malchus, so that indicates that the 27 is the feminine Aleph base. And the 22, without the Mansapach, without the five final letters, they're masculine. So what's the idea here? It's also that Isha Ola Zach Siduri. If I take woman and I take it in ordinal numbering, it's called. 
So each letter is the its its order in the aleph base. So aleph is one, and shin is twenty-one, and he is five. So one plus twenty-one plus five is equal to twenty-seven. There's another hint for it. But the twenty-two letters kasher kafbet otiot haTorah mechinat ish, they are the masculine. And what's the where do, where is this hinted according to the Mukubalim? That says vayishkav v'makom ahu. Vayishkav. There's actually even an author who brings this uh, kavana. He says, is Yesh Kafbet. Yaakov slept in that place, and it's to say that he, he was Yesh there. Yesh Kafbet. Okay, so we won't get into this too much. So, Hazach de Zachar, Zachar Kulon, Nutrikun Zachar Ezer. To be a male really means to be able to connect to this idea, to be a real man is to be able to connect to this idea that my marriage is in order to refine me. So no matter how bad it is, it's because of me. It's because I, I brought it there, or I am so unrefined that I need a woman who will really oppose me. And you find people 20 years, 25 years into marriage, and they hate it. They can't stand, they stay, who knows why they stay married until eventually they don't. Why? What happened? Because you made mistakes, you did things that were wrong, it doesn't matter. But then you kick it. You say, if, if it's so bad, I don't want it. And really, in a certain sense, what's happening is, is that you're giving up on your, your only chance to really refine yourself. Not your only chance, you can, there's always another chance, you know. But at that moment, th this is where you really need to be. At that moment, this is what's going to help you the most. That feeling, it's a, it's a sinking feeling. People come to this. That the imams don't want to come home. The imams feel that this is the worst place. Now. Imagine, you, you know, when you, you just got married, you feel that this is the most wonderful thing I've ever done. And this should be the, this should be the most wonderful thing. And you have a family. You begin to build a family. And, and then after a few years, it becomes that this is the last place on earth that you want to see at the end of the day. Imagine Chaz Shalom, somebody is ill with some, some disease. So he doesn't just have it at the end of the day, he has it all day long. So he also he can kick it. He can say, Hashem, I don't, who, why did you do this to me? Why do, I, why do I need this? What is this good for? The biggest challenge that we have is to believe that Hashem is only good and if I'm suffering from something, it's to refine me. It's the biggest challenge in life, because there's always, always suffering in life. So what's a, how does that fit into like, um, the Gemara's that say, that uh, it's a mitzvah to be Megarish, and all these things, like if you find much of I have a stuff, or uh, all these things, like... Say, show, shana. If you find much of I have a stuff, then he should get rid of her, and stuff like that. So, if it's Erebus Dover, why is Erebus Dover? Erebus Dover means she became usher for me. Rabbi Akiva, yes. So first of all, Erebus Dover means an Erba, Mama Shorayos. And then I have to, because this like says that we're no longer part of the same thing. She was a Tzmiel. You know what I'm saying? Akiva, yes. At the end, the Filu, the Dichat of Shilu. So everybody says that what Rebbe Akiva is saying is not a, a, a sort of, a, 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 is not a, I mean, you look at all the explanations, everybody was, I, I don't remember anybody who didn't go in this direction, that what he means to say is, if you find that her ruining your, your soup or something like that is cause for you to divorce her, you don't deserve to be the other. I mean, you don't deserve to have a wife. Also, I, the Gemara ends uh, with the Mashiach Red Mount. As it's Vada, the Kulam, it's a bad thing. That's how most people yeah, explain it. Yeah. That's how everybody explains the Rabbi Akiva. He's not telling you you can get, you should get divorced because of this, but rather, if this is what you feel, get divorced. Because you have no concept of what it means to, get, to be married. That you can't even handle that. You know how much you have to handle. <laughs> okay. Haynu shorosh ishtobo kocholi is the kech. So the whole zikuch, the whole refinement of the man, is his woman. 
it, it's like when I get married, I receive the power to refine. That before then, everything I called refinement is not even a refinement. It's not zikul. It's not really changing. The, it's common today in the, in the New Age world to say this is something that came from the, from the Buddhists. I think the Dalai Lama was the one who made it popular. That if you think that you're in, you've advanced, that you're refined, you've advanced spiritually, so as an adult, go be with your parents for a week. And then you'll find out how refined you are. But that's, that's the Dalai Lama because he's not married. <laughs> <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. What was the question? If you think you're refined, go handle your parents for a week. Go live with your parents for a week. See if you can handle the amount of criticism you're going to get in, in, in an hour. After an hour, you want to run away. <coughs> if your parents are anything like my parents, you should be healthy. At least my mother, my father, should be having Ali on the Shama. <laughs> so, the amount of criticism you get in, in an hour. Is enough to last you a month, okay? I got my dose. So go be there for, for a week. But if you're not refined, you get this all the time from your wife. All the time. Criticism, not criticism. <laughs> so the, I said, Dalai Lama said that because Buddhists are monks, they don't get married. <laughs> no commitments for them. But for us, it's the simplest thing. So he, was giving, he was giving him a commitment. He was giving him his he, example. He was, he, the only he, example he knew he, of. Yeah. But the real example is your wife. Yeah. But she's doing you a favor. Because this, I mean, you can't really think about it, not all the time at least, as two separate people. You really did come together. You're two parts of the same soul. So the, the understanding is that, that you have a lot of yeshut and she has a lot of power of refinement. If you, if you don't believe that she can clean stuff, Okay. <laughs> you see how she breaks her back before her pesa. She can even clean you. If she can clean the, the chametz out of the house, she can clean you. Clean the chametz out of us. But that's the bris. That's the real covenant that we have when we get married. That you won't leave me until until I'm fixed. She b'schut ze zacha ezer v'im lo zacha kenegdo liilachem. So there, therefore, says Rashi. That if you're not, if you don't refine, then she'll do it like you scour a pot. So first of all, your, your sense of importance, your sense of, of, of self-centeredness, your egocentricism, all these things, they have to be canceled until, before you can refine. Because it's no longer just about you. Until you got married, it was only about you. That's all you know. Now, it's about somebody else. Again, not to see it, the hardest part is not to see it as she's against me because she despises me. If she despises me, that's already a problem. She's against me because she's sensitive to my refinement. According to what you're saying, the Ezzet and the Kinecdo is only from our perspective. She's always going to be clashing with my need to, to, to improve and to be Zakat. Because no. if, if I'm refined, she's an Ezer. So but what I you'll never do... Be, if I'm so refined, there's, always, no, there's no end refinement. You can always yeah, be more But refined. the more refinement is no longer to be negative. The negative is only in the beginning to be the battle of the issues. If, if, according to this data that, that I have now, okay. I'm refined to learn to what I was before. I'm not very unrefined to work in regard to what I could be, right? So for this stage up, I'm unrefined. So there should be also going to be no. negative. The first level of refinement is called the person has shiftless. That he doesn't hold himself to be the center of the world. The moment that you reach that, the other dargas of refinement are like bitl. So what he said here. The first zikuch is to be is is to is to lezakech at ayesh, and then there's bitul ayesh. So he's saying that bitul here going to be bitul is lazo is to help. Because bitul means to do more in the world. So wait, according to this, you're saying, I have this before, when we're saying that between bitul and zikul, that we should be, so you're saying that zikul is the first stage and then comes bitul? No. Zikul is first, that's like shiftless. That's what has to come out of it. And then bitul is for me to become more like Hashem, a more, more of a mashpia. 
Okay, let, let's let's make this uh, perfectly clear because uh, if it's not clear, then you may think really forever she has to contradict me. No. The first thing is that I can't be self-centered. To be, I can't be egocentric. She has to see that I don't hold myself to be the center of the universe. Not everything revolves around me. What does it mean that not everything revolves around me? If somebody honked at me on, at the light, so who's he honking, honking at? Moshe Genut, he doesn't know me. He's running late. He, he's, he has his problems, whatever they are. I happen to be there. Does it, does it not mean anything? It may mean something to me. But it's not because of me. And he doesn't know me. Even somebody who does know me. And he did something to me. So to say that it's all about me is to take it in a certain way. People who feel that they're the center of the world are also very susceptible to being hurt. Everything hurts your feelings. Why, why is everything hurting your feelings? Because you think that everything is about you. Everybody has nothing better to do but to talk about you. And everybody has nothing better to do than to, you know, get involved in your affairs and to, you know, people have their lives. And the less self-centered you are, the more you understand that the world is a big place. You know, I'm not the center. The Rabbi Isaac of Homo used to give a mashal. In his time, they started having merry-go-rounds. They worked on the steam at the time. So he said, to feel what it means to lose your egocentricity, to stop being self-centered is like the moment when you're walking up to the merry-go-round and you actually get on it. The moment that you get on it, you sort of lose your, you, you lose your balance. Because until now, all your balance was because you were the center of the universe. Everything, everything revolved around you. Now suddenly you get on something that's revolving around a different center. The moment that you are able to live there, to know that you're revolving around something else, you and I and everybody here is revolving not around ourselves, but around some other common center, that's the moment you lose your self-centeredness. By the way, that, the Regina once explained that that's why today we hold that the solar system revolves around the sun and not the way that they used to hold. Before the 16th century, everybody knew that the sun revolved around the earth. The planets revolved around the earth. We were in the center. The Regina was told that told already in the 19th century, the early 19th century, 1810, something like that. He was told that now scientists say that no, it's the earth that revolves around the sun. Science does. But right? So, so it started from Copernicus, but it became common knowledge by the Hasidim only 300 years later. So it takes time. Also, we knew about it. That was a long time. So, so the regenerate says that he put his head down and he thought a little and then when he got back up he said it's because the tzaddikim decided that it should be so. That's what he said. The tzaddikim decided. It's not because really, the, really they're the same. It doesn't really matter. Scientifically there's no difference. At least it's very hard to come by a difference. There is one difference that you can measure. But let's not get into it now. So he said it's because the tzaddikim decided this. So it was explained later, his chassidim explained what he meant was that it's no longer good for us to feel that we're the center of the universe. We have to feel, even, even scientifically, our picture of the world should be such that we're all revolving around a common center. Not everything is revolving around us. So what's the common center? Who's the sun in our lives? If we're the planets, who's the sun? The moment you understand that the world is not revolving around you, but it's revolving around the Abister, it just like in science, what happened was that the equations became much simpler. It makes everything a lot more simple. You begin to understand that but the I world is that. more simple than you think it is. That now that we're coming back to the theory of relativity and that things are already known, it depends on the position that you're looking at. It's already it's coming the other way around already. No, it just means that you, you can also you can right, switch so from one to the other. So what, what but the common knowledge by everybody is today that so we're revolving. Okay, it, it worked. It worked. If you're already so refined that you already learned the Rebbe, maybe you can uh, maybe you can also understand the other side. 
around the Nefesh Elokis, that's what the Rebbe tried to do. The Rebbe definitely tried to explain that when you use your divine soul, the world revolves around your divine soul. But that's like saying it revolves around the Devishta. Because there's nothing that can stop what a Jew needs to do. If you need to do a mitzvah, or you need to do something that the Abishra told you to do, then the world does revolve around you, in that sense. But that's when you're being a shaliach, not when you're working for yourself. If I'm working for myself, then I, like everybody else, am revolving around the Abishra. The moment that you change that in your mind, from that moment on, the quest, the, that, that's called zikuf. That's called the refined. That's called having shiftless, lowliness. What, is, what does loneliness first of all mean? It means that I don't feel better than anybody else. If I feel that I'm better than... To feel self-centered is to feel I'm better than you. Yeah? I'm better than you because I'm this and that. It doesn't matter what. The moment that everybody's revolving around the sham, everybody's equal around the sham. Everybody's at an equal distance. There's no nobody revolving faster or revolving slower. This doesn't exist. Everybody's revolving at the same time. Also, one of the meanings of uh, milchama that, that she she fights with him, the ilachem, kenegdoli ilachem, is to get into a machol. One of the things that the Baal Shem Tov taught is you should see yourself as revolving around, dancing with everybody else in a circle around something. What's the that thing? What it says in the Gemara, hine uh, lokein uze, dancing around the shem. So if you come to that state, you already have shiftless, you have a, you're, you're refined. From that moment on, the question is bitul, which is a different quality altogether. What does bitul mean? Bitul, as opposed to what most people think, is not becoming more spiritual, but bitul always means becoming more practical, more physical, more in the world. Because bitul is bitul yesh la'ayim. Meaning, it's that I have a yesh, Hashem wants me to have a yesh, but it's refined already, I don't think I'm better than anybody else, but I do have a shlichus. If you're not mezukach, you can't even talk about shlichus. That's why the Rebbe wouldn't appoint really somebody as a shaliach until they were married. An official shaliach was only when you're married, because he's assuming that your wife will take care of the zikuch, the, the, the refinement. And once the refinement is in place, you can begin to do the shlichus that the ein, the ein sof, sent here you into the world. So, he, so I mean, and then so, she has to help you. But so this is happening to Mara. This is happening on us. And the woman saying like she's reacting to, to our yeah, well, That's what you said. She reacts right, very so, well. So, so what is how does she become the ezer? If I need to, if I need, if I need to grow to my bitul, which is ein sof, it now will be more. Come to. If I need now to start my avoid of bitul, which is ein ben- sof. It's, it's been managed every single moment, aspect of your being, being in this level that you have. Right, so the, what, how does that woman become the husband? Like you see that there's, there's, there's a person who decides, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do shlichus, and his wife keeps nagging him, but I need this, and I need this, and I need this, and I need you at home. That's not an ezra. What's, what, what's the best example of shlichus that we saw in the Gemara between a man and a woman? That a woman who sent her husband out on shlichus. It's an amazing thing that she did. Before I got married, uh, Rav Steinzaltz, I guess he decided that I needed uh, a few, uh, call it, warning signs. <laughs> Not to do certain things. He saw who I was. So he, one of the times before I got married, he said, I want to talk to you about the story about uh, Rachel and Rabbi Akiva. And I know that most men think that the ideal is that their woman, their wife is going to send them away for 14 years to learn. 12 years to learn. 12 and then another 12. So he says, how do you think that worked? Like, what's the picture in your head? So the, the first 12 years, we know how they worked. How did they work? So the first day he, he had to decide, she nagged him, go do. Do what? He was refined already. So she told him, go do something. Like, go what? Uh, go to the cheder. He didn't want to go, because it was very embarrassing. A four-year-old guy sitting there with four and three, or three and four and five-year-olds. But she nagged him. She gave him the space. So he went. How long did it take him to finish cheder? Page 40? Uh, 
probably took him three months, four months. He finished Schreiner. He, then he went to, 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 to learn Mishnah. He began to learn Mishnah. How long did it take him to learn all the Mishnahs about by heart? Probably a few years. How did that work? So he didn't go away suddenly. Every day, like with the cheder. For the cheder, you finish at 1 o'clock, right? Then you go, you, you graduate to grade school. So they finish there at 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock. He didn't stay longer. He came back home. So the first three, few years, for sure, he was coming back home. Then he went into yeshiva. There was a yeshiva next to him. So he kept coming back. Every day he was home. Then it tells Miriam Standos what happened. And she began seeing that he needed more time to learn. He was very good at it. So she told him one day, you know what, today don't come back home. Sleep in the yeshiva. Chaval Nizman that you travel back and forth. So one day a week he started sleeping in the yeshiva. After a couple of years, she said, two days a week, three days a week, four days a week. After 12 years, he wasn't home a whole week. He came home. Arab Shabbos, and he hears her talking to her neighbor. What are they talking about? She, the neighbor says, how can you stand not having your husband at home? And then she said, if it was up to me, I would give him 12 years. I would send him away for 12 years. And he heard that, and, and well, she's saying the truth, that she's ready for it. She's willing to sacrifice for the shluchas. She's willing to sacrifice 12 years of being alone. So he did that. And it was the best shluchas in the world because we got all of Torah about Pesach. It's amazing what she did. And then he said, Shali v'shalachem, shalai. It's really hers. Because she was the azer. She was the one who forced me into bitul, into doing my shluchas in such a way that it was no day and no night, no home, not, nothing just my shluchas, and it was very successful in the end. But you say that he started away from there from So he started like a regular person. You see, say he started not like, you say he started from there then. What, with the minute he could marry, he was already mezukah. He was mezukah. We see that she saw that he had good midot. But, but for us, that, that the 12 years at a five, or the 24 years are, are still mezukah. It doesn't take more than, doesn't take more than 70 years to be mezukah. <laughs> No, that is, that's Tru a, that's truthfully, <laughs> truthfully, every person can come to to zikuch. Twenty-seven years can come to zikuch in a few years. If you treat your wife with respect and you do everything she says, you'll be mizukah. The the problem is that people are afraid of this of this stage. They think it's going to last forever, and it doesn't. It's a, it's a test. It's almost like a test. Can you become? Can you get rid of your self-centeredness? And if you can. You won't, you won't believe how supportive she is. It, it's mamish. But it, there's it, also mitzvahs. I mean, nowadays, I, I don't want to be today. The shluchus is together. I, 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 don't, I don't want to speak about you know, okay, what, okay. but I'm saying general things. Nowadays, you know, people psychologically are more with you. We believe it. Right? No. No. no, they can handle just as much. The problem is that we people are less physical. We're weaker people. We people. That's, yeah. that's the body is weaker, not the psychology. People are very strong. People are... Rabusha used to say that what people went through in, a, in, 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 in... How did you say? In a few hundred years, people go through in 30 years today. The, the amount of difficulty that there is psychologically, because not, not, of, of physical things also, but it's psychologically. What we carry today what we do in 30 years, they didn't do in, in hundreds of years in the past. So that, that doesn't matter that, I mean, the things we can make us more, we're more, we're more, uh, people used to be much, much more simple before, right? They used to work. Simpler. They were simpler. They were simpler. They could carry less. They were very strong physically, and their body carried them very strongly, but the, the, the nephesh wasn't so strong. The nephesh is only becoming stronger as time goes on. That's what it means that Yeridata Dorot is that we're getting further away from, call it, the natural state of, uh, of the world, and we become weaker, but in terms of the psyche, we're only getting, we know more and more today. What we know today, nobody could have said 500 yeah, years ago. also, amassing knowledge is not necessarily uh, seen enough for anything. Yeah. It's kind of because you have to do it. 
But to have this talk, nobody could have had uh, 200 years ago. Even 100 years ago, nobody could have said this. So how are you explaining that? You did us a great How are you explaining that? It's physically. We're further away from Ahmad al-Sinai. Physically, we're further away. We know less, as it were. We know less of what they saw. But from ourselves, we know more. The further away we come from the Gilui that was at Har Sinai, the more we have a Gilui from inside of ourselves. That's what Chassidus is about. That we know more and more about who we are. We can know. We, we know. We work Here it is. It's in the book. But, I mean, it's, it requires... An you hear one Sicha from the Rebbe. You, you, you just heard more than they probably heard about, about the human condition and how to, how to be a mensch than he heard... Okay, that means that it's more accessible. It's really more accessible. It's also part of it. It's also part of it. The knowledge becomes more accessible. It flows out more easily. You connect to it more easily. And it makes a bigger impact on, on your life. People today do so much in 70 years that they couldn't dream of. They simply could not dream of this 500 years ago. There's no way they could even, in, in their wildest dreams, say, Imagine just to go to America and back, let's say in, four, uh, in 1600s. It was a three-month trip and you didn't know if you'd make it. Each way, three months each direction. We do it in 10 hours. 11 hours. We, it's unheard of what we do. We can do so much more. The question, And, and we have to have a psyche that can handle it. This <laughs> was a story I once heard that a friend of mine, back when it was still when they were still considered people that you could trust. So he was going from Hebron to Be'er Sheva. A friend that lives in Hebron. There's an old Arab outside of Hebron trying to, to get a tramp. So he let him on. He took him two kilometers, and the guy says, uh, let me off. <laughs> well, we have a long way to go to Be'er Sheva. He wanted to go to Be'er Sheva. He says, yeah, yeah, but my, my soul still haven't, hasn't caught up even the distance we just traveled. It's like an old guy. He, he, he didn't realize what it meant to go in a fast car from Chavon to Be'er Sheva in 40 minutes. He was used to his camel. He was used to like, <laughs> it takes time to get there. It takes time for my soul to, be, to, to catch up with me. Okay? We, we don't know what that is anymore. <laughs> we have no clue why. Because we're much more robust when it comes to the psyche. The psyche in us is, wow. It can just... <laughs> now. It's Speedy, now it's speedy Gonzalez. <laughs> what? Now generation. Jet generation. It's, it's a jet generation. Now. Okay, okay. The whole thing is, is immediate. And the soul is there. It, it's, it's, that's how it functions now. It's much harder than we function. And there's no, nobody could imagine that you could do so much as we do today. What anyway. About, what, what about the fact that nowadays, for example, what they work for? They all say all the time that or at least what uh, we take it. But the amount of depression that there is today and the amount of uh, anxiety and today and anxiety, it's, it's off roots. People would be bored in their psyche. Uh -huh. Since they, they were seen, you said it. They don't learn there's depression like that everyone's depressed. Mamish, because, because they don't learn for citizens. <laughs> that's the reason. But, but, that, but that's also the psyche is not so strong as it should be. It's very strong because it's, they're, not, they're not jumping off like lemmings. That's what dealing with a lot more. Well, we're than dealing with a, a tremendous amount of, 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 of difficulty and pressure. But it's it's very understandable that people in, in, in because they don't they don't know how to deal with it. I have to, we have to teach them. That's why. So you're saying that actually we're more connected. That's why we're more aware of what's happening. If we don't know how to deal with it, we're more connected. Or maybe connected. we're not connected. Maybe we don't know how to connect. But we're more conscious and more aware. But we're going through it anyway, whether we like it or not. But, so let me understand what you're saying right now is that the, this thing that, that, that you said that this strong psyche is that we're more aware, we're more connected, therefore if you don't have to deal with it, you go crazy. Uh -huh. there's, a, there's, a, there's a theory of, of, of a thing. Uh -huh. So you, you don't uh -huh. have to deal with crazy. Right. The Rebbe says in one Sicha that the Nevoah, the Yeshaya says, that the, that the mountains of Israel will grow trees and give fruit. He says it's a nevua. It's not a. It's not. Yeshai wasn't suddenly a horticulturist. He didn't suddenly become an agriculturist. He didn't become a farmer. Suddenly, he's Yeshai. He's a. He's a navi. So everything he says is a mashal. So what is a mashal for? He says it's a mashal for the development of the psyche. That the peros, the fruit 
is the ability to use our psyche, what came from the from the from the hal, from inside the hiru, from the thoughts inside, gives fruit. He says that's that's what Hasidus is. Hasidus is trying to use the, the, the new land that's been discovered inside in order to give off fruit. But whether we like it or not, we're being taken there. Okay. So either you learn how to how to give off good, good fruit, you learn how to bring the water in, you learn how to tend to the trees, you learn how to tend to yourself, and you give off fruit, or you remain, you feel like <laughs> you're being pulled all the time, you're, you're, you're being pressured into doing it. Okay. So the moment that, that you're mizukaf, the moment that you're refined, suddenly, or, or as a process, your wife becomes your biggest helper. And to become a helper means to help you do your shluchos. I thought what we were going to say is that the Rebbe was very adamant that today the shluchos is a joint effort. Meaning it's not just that the man goes out like he used to be, and he does his thing, and his wife just uh, tends to the house at home. No, it becomes a, a partnership. And so you have this thing with Batech about having co-directors. Or I'm not saying it works by everybody, but that's at least the idea. And so the idea is that we have a shlichus together. Even the family is a shlichus together. It always has to be together in that sense. In any case, then the, the wife becomes interested in our shlichus. Instead of being interested in what seems to me like just closing me off. And like just, just uh, stopping every, every good action that I want to do. What I think is a good action. But what she sees is that I'm self-centered. So even when I go daven... If I go daven for myself, it can become uh, something she's opposed to. Why did you go? Why did you go so early today? Why did you go so late? Why did you? Go? What do you mean? I, I have to go. Well, usually women leave that alone. But then if I go to Lawrence, it's the same thing. If I go do this or I went to help somebody, first help here. <laughs> because why did I go help? I didn't really go help in order to help. Because she knows. <laughs> because she knows. I, w I went to help because I want to be there, not here. <laughs> Exactly. She picks up on it. We're, we're going to continue the next session, Mr. Sam. Uh, 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 uh,